Hi, and welcome to Beatle Dave's Beatles channel. Today's video is episode 9 of my Apple Records album series, so please come and join me. So hello and a wonderfully warm welcome again today to Beatle Dave's Beatles channel. Hope I find all you wonderful Beatles people doing really well out there and thank you so much for joining me again today. Well the subject for today's showing is episode 9 of my Apple Records album series and of course it's the Doris Try LP. And actually it was while she was working as a backing singer with Billy Preston that George Harrison actually offered her a contract. Although sadly she only recorded one album for Apple Records. So in this series then, I've decided to show each album in release date order, as well as showing any additional USA or reissue pressings, and of course there's going to be some 8 tracks along the way as well. But obviously I won't be showing any solo Beatles albums, just the other artists that were signed to the Apple Records label. Okay then, so right now it's time for something a little bit different. It's... So yes, welcome to Ask Beatle Dave, where I'll be answering your questions that you have about anything Beatles related. Maybe about something that I've shown or haven't shown so far. Maybe something to do with the guy's solo careers. Just about anything that you want to ask me, and I'll endeavour to answer it right here. So today's question then is from Gerard McMullen. Hiya Gerard, hope you're well my friend. And he asks, Beatle Dave, in your opinion, should you leave the original shrink on an album or remove and place into a new plastic sleeve. Well, my own personal views are that if you've got sealed albums from the 1960s and 70s, which are more likely going to be from the USA, they're going to be worth more if actually if you keep them sealed, and of course you should have breathe holes in them anyway in the shrink, so they should be fine. So as regards to new and more recent vinyl, I always remove the shrink and put them into a new heavyweight plastic sleeve. But the, you know, the shrink in more recent vinyl doesn't appear to have breathe holes in, but even vinyl has to breathe, and if it's not been stored correctly, it's more likely to sweat and even suffer with mould, and we certainly don't want that as record collectors. So Gerard, I hope that answers that question for you, and guys, if you want to contribute to Ask Beatle Dave, just send me a question in the comments, and I'll include it in a future episode. It's that simple. So come on guys, please please me by getting involved, and ask me some super questions. Okay now, so moving on, it's time for... So yes, it's on to them fabulous old shout outs. And it's a great big Beatle Dave hello to Philippe Butenmuller Torhausen, Fernando Jaso, Mike Roberts, Daniel Costello, Hendrik Franson, Olap Rosek, Sean D67, and Charlie Maguire. So that's a big hi to you guys from yours truly, Beatle Dave. So on to the main event then today, and it's episode 9 of my Apple Records album series and the Doris Troy LP. So please, come and join me. Doris Troy was released on Apple Records on the 11th of September 1970 in the UK and two months later in the USA on the 9th of November, with the front album photograph being taken by Mel Evans. After an international hit of the song Just One Look in 1963, she continued to look to Britain to further her career and finally settled in London in 1969 and had also produced hits for The Hollies and The Small Faces. Doris had started to become a much sought after vocal arranger, contributing to the Rolling Stones song You Can't Always Get What You Want and then in the early summer of 1969 received an invitation to attend overdub sessions for the Billy Preston album That's The Way God Planned It. Upon meeting Billy Preston's producer, George Harrison, Troy was surprised to learn that he was a big fan of her work and following the sessions, Harrison offered her a recording contract with Apple Records. Doris clearly was very demanding, actually signing three contracts with Apple as an artist 
a songwriter and a producer. She was given her own office at Apple's HQ with a piano that encouraged songwriting collaborations with Beatles, Harrison and Starr, as well as other visitors to the band's Savile Row premises. Recorded mainly at Trident, sessions for the album continued alongside many other Harrison projects, with session work for the Plastic Ono Band, producing recordings by Billy Preston, Jackie Lomax and the Radha Krishna Temple, as well as a brief tour with Delaney and Bonnie. Through these activities, other associates of Harrison offered to contribute to Troy's album, including Peter Frampton, Stephen Stills, Klaus Foreman, Billy Preston, Ringo Starr and Harrison himself. Originally intended as a standalone single, Ain't That Cute was released in February of 1970 but failed to chart in Britain or America, although the single was later voted as 1970's sole record of the year by readers of The Melody Maker. Sadly, Doris Troy's album suffered from a lack of promotion under Alan Klein's control of Apple Records. Despite receiving good reviews from several music critics, the Doris Troy album failed to make any commercial impact in the UK or in the US. So let's take a look. So here it is then, the Doris Troy album, released in the UK on the 11th of September 1970 on Apple Records, Sapcore 13. So starting with the cover then, and there's a few little laminate marks there on the right hand side sadly, but this is a really glossy looking cover. Got Doris Troy there at the top with a great picture of Doris by Mal Evans. And you had a lot of people involved in the making of this album, obviously including George, Ringo, Klaus Foreman, Billy Preston, Peter Frampton, Steve Stills, Eric Clapton, Delaney and Bonnie, and Leon Russell. So there's a lot of names on this album, but it's, you know, I really like this album. It's really great, really soulful, quite funky. Let's flip that over. Of course, there's a little message there at the top there. Thank you all from Doris, or Love Doris there, top left. And then we've got all the tracks there. You've got Ain't That Cute, which obviously was one of the 45s, which was written by George and obviously Doris Troy. So the second track is Special Care, which was written by Steve Stills. And then you've got Give Me Back My Dynamite, written by Harrison and Doris Troy. And then of course you've got You Tore Me Up Inside, which is written by Doris and a guy called Shinnery. Games People Play, which is written by Joe South, of course. So continuing then with Gonna Get My Baby Back, written by George, Ringo, Doris Troy and Steve Stills. And then I've Got To Be Strong, written by Jackie Lomax and Doris Troy. So on side two then, you've got a track called Hurry, which was written by Doris Troy. So Far, which is written by Klaus Foreman and Doris Troy. Exactly Like You, written by McHugh and Fields. With the next track, You Give Me Joy Joy, written by Doris Troy. George Harrison, Ringo Starr and Steve Stills with Don't Call Me No More, written by Doris Troy and Shinnery and Jacob's Ladder, which is the final track on this album which is also a single with Get Back on the B-side which was a traditional song and all these tracks were published by Apple Publishing Limited and right at the bottom there you've got produced by Doris Troy photographed by Mal Evans and designed by John Kosh and then at the side you've got the Apple Records details for Savile Row there, 3 Savile Row, London West 1. And at the bottom there, printed and made by Gavin Lofthouse. Let's take a look at that spine as well then. It's a very thin spine this one. So we've got an Apple Records white inner for this album, although it's slightly off-white. So it's got the copyright exist details there in all Apple Records. And it's in great shape. Of course, you've got the patents number there, bottom left, and Made in Great Britain on the bottom right there. So on to the super vinyl then. It's not in too bad condition, this particular vinyl. It's probably about VG+, plus, but uh, it's had a few plays, as well as from me. But it's a really nice vinyl, considering. So there you are then, you've got the Apple Records on the perimeter there, with the 33 and a third, and manufactured in the UK, and side one on the left, with Deutsch Troy there above the centre hole, and on the right there we've got Stereo, Sapcore 13 and the P1970. With all the tracks listed there with Doris Troy and produced by Doris Troy. With the matrix on side one being Sapcore 13A-2U. Nice and simple. 
So you're going to flip that over and spin that round. Got a little bit of writing there, unfortunately, or a pen mark on one of the tracks. But once again, this is in it's pretty good shape, this vinyl. It's got little greys on it, I think, I believe, just on this side. But it's in pretty good shape. We've got Apple Records on the perimeter rim there, with the 33 and a third, manufactured in the UK, and side two on the left. With Dois Troy there, above the centre hole, and stereo, Sapcore 13, and the P1970 on the right. With all the tracks there, and Doris Troy, and produced by Doris Troy. With the final matrix on this side being Sapcore 13B-1U. And this does actually sound really great, this record. I do actually really like this album. So my next copy then of the Doris Troy album is this USA one which was released on the 9th of November 1970 on Apple Records, catalogue number ST3371. So this one's still sealed up, absolutely super. It's got breathe holes on it so it's perfectly safe when it's got breathe holes. Got that picture of Doris again with more of a purple sort of tinge and a purple border with obviously Doris Troy at the top there. Obviously it's slightly different than the UK one because it's more blue actually the UK one around the border and obviously this has got more of a purple tinge. Let's flip that over. You've got that message from Doris of course there once again with the tracks side one and side two produced by Doris Troy, photographed by Mal Evans and designed by John Kosh with that fabulously green Granny Smith there and of course you've got the Apple Records Inc. 1700 Broadway address in America with Apple and the catalogue number right at the bottom, ST3371. Let's take a look at that spine then. So on to another variation then of the Doris Troy album. This one is the USA 8 track, released on the 9th of November 1970 on Apple Records, catalogue number 8XT, 3371. So once again, this particular 8 track is sealed. As you can see there, you've got the same image there with the Apple logo to the right, and you've got the catalogue number there. We're programmed 1, 2, 3, and 4. There is slightly different order in this particular 8 track cassette. And then you've got Apple 8 track stereo there at the bottom. And then at the back there, we've got Apple 8 track stereo and the warranty. And then we're going to flip that that way. You've got Apple 8-track stereo again. And finally, at the bottom there, you've got Doris Troy and the catalogue number. Really superb. So my final Doris Troy item then I've got to show today is this one from the Apple Records reissue campaign. It's actually reissued the same day as such albums as The Whale, No Dice, Earth Song and The Ivies. It was actually released on the 30th of June 1992 on Apple Records, catalogue number Sapcore 13. So onto the cover then. And obviously these reissues are not laminated, but they've got a nice shine. Got Doris Troy at the top there, with that image from Mao Evans, who photographed Doris there at her piano. You've got the blue border, just like the original UK one. And we're going to flip that over. You've got the barcode top right then, which is 077779870110. And the message from Doris, of course. And then we've got record one, side one and two. Record two, which is the bonus tracks, which is five of them. Side one and side two. And that Granny Smith, and all tracks digitally remastered. Originally released in 1970. And then on the right there you've got Made in England. And even better than that, you've got a fabulous gatefold sleeve there. With Doris, picture of Doris, and then some information, a discography. And then you've got all the tracks again, record one, side one and two, and record two, which is the bonus tracks. And of course we've got that fabulous thick spine. So the inner sleeve then is a nice poly-lined inner one, really nice. So onto the vinyl then. Sadly these are still quite thin, all these reissue, Apple reissues are really quite thin. But you've got some really great labels on these, they look really fabulous. 
and this is absolutely mint condition you've got the 33 and a third on the left there with manufactured in the UK side one and the digitally remastered details by Ron Fermanek and of course you've got Doris Troy in the middle there and produced by Doris Troy and on the right there you've got stereo with Sapcore 13 and all the copyright details there with all the tracks at the bottom and the matrix on this side is Sapcore 13 1A-1-1-1 so we're going to flip that to side 2 a sliced side once again absolutely perfect condition really great looking label they certainly got better as they went along with this campaign the labels got much better of course on the left there again you've got the 33 and a third with the manufactured in the UK and side 2 with all tracks digitally remastered by Ron Fermanek and Doris Troy there produced by Doris Troy and stereo Satcore 13 with all the copyright details and all the tracks listed at the bottom and then on side 2 the matrix is Satcore 13 1B-1-1-1 and this sounds absolutely fantastic played this one the other day and it sounded really good so the second polyline dinner exactly the same as the first but in great shape as well so the final vinyl then this is the bonus vinyl for this LP these are getting incredibly rare to find these reissue albums they really are and you've got three tracks on this side which are all that I've got get back and dearest darling of course this actually runs at 45 rpm you've got the manufactured in the UK on the left there with side one and all tracks digitally remastered by Ron Fermanek with Doris Troy produced by Doris Troy then on the right there you've got stereo and Sapcore 13 with the three tracks listed and Doris Troy at the bottom with the matrix on this side being Sapcore 13 2A dash one dash one dash one and we're going to flip that over then for the final side and on the left there we've got 45 with the manufacturing in the UK and side two once again all the tracks digitally remastered by Ron Fermanek and Doris Troy produced by Doris Troy there at the top with stereo and Sapcore 13 with the two tracks which are What You Will Blues and Voya Con Dios which means Go With God and you've got Doris Troy at the bottom and finally then the matrix on this side is Sapcore 13 2B-1-1 Dash one. And once again, this is absolutely mint condition. Really nice. Sounds absolutely fantastic. So thank you all for joining me today guys and tuning in and I really hope you've enjoyed seeing all those fabulous Doris Troy LPs that I've got and don't forget I appreciate any comments or communication that I get from any of you Beatle people and I'll always come back to you just as soon as I can. So the next Apple Records album series episode will be back again next month with Billy Preston's second and final Apple album Encouraging Words which was released on the same day as the Doris Troy album on both sides of the Atlantic. So next week then is my final video of this year and it's going to be the Solo Years episode 5 and it's the John Lennon Plastic Ono Band album which was obviously John's first proper solo album. So make sure you're here next week, same Beatles time, same Beatles channel. So anyway as always if you enjoy what I'm doing why not give us a like, subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you don't miss out on any future videos. This is Beetle Dave signing off. Beetle Dave's Beetle's channel.